MD Prepper here. Do another fun gun review on the Phoenix Arms HP 22A and 22 caliber long rifle. Now this is of course a very low cost handgun running about $130, $140 that I picked up. Generally considered a Saturday night special. I don't know if I'd consider it that because this thing is way over safe for a Saturday night special. But we'll get into that. Bought this for one reason. Well, two reasons really. Number one, I didn't have one. Thought I should pick one up, just play around with it, just see what you can get for 130 bucks. And number two, as a trainer, to train folks to shoot small semi-auto pistols in smaller caliber so they don't get scared of the small guns. I train a lot of folks who've never shot before on my property here and at the gun range, and a lot of them are terrified of small handguns, especially if they fire a small little 380, something like that. It's got a lot of kick. This is a good place to start them out, I thought, as a decent little addition to my selection for training guns. But enough on that. Let's get into the stats on this thing. We'll talk about the good and the bad of this. And it's got enough of both. It's 20 ounces, which is fairly heavy overall for a gun this size compared to a lot of the carry options that are out there. So this is a very small gun, relatively speaking, but compared to some of the carry guns that are out there, it's quite a bit large and heavy. It's got a 3-inch barrel on it, though there's an additional long barrel you can get. It comes with a 10-round straight magazine. Dimensions on the outside are 4.1 by 5.5 inches, and it's roughly an inch wide. I just measured that. It's about an inch. Only comes with one magazine and comes in this somewhat flashy cardboard box. A little bit prettier than your high points. Nothing major at all. Got a gun lock in it. Manual. Plastic bag, etc. So, not a lot of accessories with this. Only comes with one magazine, which I think is a bit of a hit against it. You really should use two, or have two. But we'll talk about that again in the future. I took this thing out today, fired 200 rounds through it. Overall, let me say, it shot very, very well. Almost no recoil. Excellent trainer to keep somebody on target and keep them from being afraid of the gun. Quite accurate. Here's the target, or the target, one of the targets anyway, from about six yards out, slow firing, just aiming at the center of the target. This was not the first 50 rounds, it wasn't the second 50 rounds, this was the third 50 rounds that I fired using the uh, Arms Core 22 that I'm starting to love. I'll do a review on that in the future, but pretty decent 22 ammo when you can find it, and it's one of the few you can find out there these days. So, that is not a terrible group. It's not nearly the grouping I've had for my bigger browning buckmark, but that's not what I expect. This is not a squirrel killer, this is just a defensive slash plinker gun. Let me go ahead and say I would not use this for concealed carry or for defensive uses because of some of the issues with this gun, which they claim are benefits, but we'll get there. I would use this for plinker and for training. Excellent for training kids, um, young shooters, females, anybody that you're going to expect to learn to handle a semi-auto weapon, this is going to get the job done for cheap. When I first started shooting back at well, shooting again at about age 21, one of my father's buddies, who's quite a gun nut, I think I've surpassed him these days, he highly recommended that I get one of his little Phoenix Arms 22 kits out there, and I ignored him and never did it, and never did it, and bought other things. Well, I finally got around to it, and he was right. I should have bought one of these a long time ago, but you just don't see these much here in South Carolina for whatever reason. I don't know why. I walked into a new gun store, well, not a new gun store, but new-to-me gun store, uh, as I was running errands in an area of town I don't go to, and they had one of these for 135 bucks. And I said, yeah, why not? Just go ahead and give it to me. I'll pick that up. So, took it out in range today, fired 200 rounds through it. Now, let me start by saying the first 100 rounds were junk ammo. It's some of the uh, bulk Winchester um, steel nose, you know, or steel nose, lead nose rounds that I just don't like. None of my guns like this stuff. I found some the other day cleaning up that had been sitting in a box forever. Um, Temperature changes, humidity, I, it's just junk, I figured. And let me say, you know, why not use this to get at least the first 100 rounds in this thing? Who cares? I think I had three stove pipes and one failure to eject on that junky ammo with this gun in the first 100 rounds. But I'd have to say, I get that same amount of failure rate shooting that stuff through my Browning Buckmark and my Ruger 1022, etc. So I cannot necessarily blame that on the gun. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But after the first 100 and... 100 rounds, actually. First 100 rounds, I did not have a single failure after that. 
until after 150 rounds I switched back to some of the junky ammo. Again, had a few little errors there. Um, another stovepipe and one more failure to eject, but I think that was the junky Winchester ammo that I just don't like. So, otherwise it shot very well. And I, obviously, as you saw, reasonably accurate. Now, going on the strong points of this thing, the, the benefits, the positives. It is quite heavy for a gun this size, which is good as a trainer. Fairly accurate, as you saw. Um, sights are not the best, but for a lot of other little pocket guns and 22s, they're they're perfectly decent, honestly, for a gun this size. You got your metal here on the back, if you can see that. That is adjustable for windage right there. And the front is just a basic blade, if you can see that right there. You could obviously put some nail polish or something on that, but generally, showing you the rear here, it's not terrible. Black and white. It stands out. It's kind of like a cheaper version of a Glock sight. Um, Oh, and this has been safety checked beforehand for you safety sallies out there. Obviously, it has the rib barrel, which is a little unique for a gun this size and this price, but makes it look a little bit better. It's a lot prettier than the Jimenez arms or high points or anything else out there, so not bad there. Comes in this kind of nickel sat satin finish, I believe is what they call it, and also comes in a matte black. All I've seen around here in South Carolina is this color on them, but whatever that you want to do with that. Let me talk about some of the more neutral factors that I don't think are pluses or minuses on this thing. Alloy frame, mostly alloy slide, etc. Still barrel, still internal parts, like a lot of your cheaper 22s and Saturday Night Specials. So nothing surprising there. This is supposedly only rated for standard velocity 22 ammo. And I thought, once I got this thing home, whoop, that's a problem. I don't have much standard velocity. All my stuff's high velocity. Uh, I don't tend to carry the hyper velocity 22s for self-defense which I've heard are very bad in this, but looking online and all, I've not seen anybody who's had any problems with this shooting the high-velocity standard ammo, and I had no problems today, of course. has a lifetime warranty with the first owner, which is great, um, but for a gun that's $135, how much do I expect out of it? Not much. If you're the second owner, it's still under somewhat of a warranty, $50 for shipping it in and letting them work on it. I don't know if I'd spend $50 on a $130 gun. I'd probably just buy another one or tinker with this one to make it work myself. Accessories for this thing, um, relatively few and far between. You have to get them mostly directly from Phoenix Arms. They've got extra magazines, 10-round uh, magazines running 1150. They have what's called an extended magazine, which isn't really extended. It's got the same capacity, 10 rounds, with an extra plastic piece that sticks below to get a full grip on this thing. As you can see, my pinky will not fit, um, whichever hand you want to see this with. That's fine that they're not getting away with the size of a gun, and I'm used to that with um, could still carry size pistols, but I'll probably pick up that extended, quote, extended magazine at some point just to play around with. That's a bit more expensive at $16. I don't know if that little piece of plastic is worth the extra $550 for it, but I'm going to get one anyway just to play around with it. They do have a range kit that I've never seen in South Carolina for sale, at least not personally, that comes with the pistol with this barrel and a 5-inch barrel that can be switched out and also comes with the 10-inch or the standard 10 round magazine and the quote extended magazine with it. Those are very reasonably priced from what I've seen. I've just never seen one for sale. If I ever do, I'll pick one up. They do sell on their website what they call two in one conversion. It comes with the longer five inch barrel and the quote extended magazine together for 45 bucks. Might be a little expensive, might not. I don't know, but I'm going to go ahead and probably pick that up, see how it does. This would be a good little gun to keep in my tackle box or something like that. Beater gun that I don't have to worry about hearing too much about keeping the tackle box for when I go down to the river in case I need to shoot some squirrels. Now, the, actually on this barrel, probably not going to be much of a squirrel killer. That 5-inch barrel might do the job. We'll see. Definitely going to be better for range practice and accuracy. Might be a decent transition barrel for shooters as well. I don't know. We'll see. They've got some nylon holsters and some other gear on their website. All fairly reasonably priced overall. Not seeing them anywhere else other than the website. So that's all the neutral stuff. Now, let me get into the negatives. Now, the company calls these positives. This thing is ultra safe. It has more safeties on it and safety features than I think my car does. And that might actually be its greatest problem. It's almost too much. It almost makes this gun unshootable in any kind of high stress situation or defensive situation. For the range, I don't think it matters. I've heard some complaints online from other video reviews that I've watched prior to buying this thing. Uh, some of that's not true. Some of the guys just didn't think through some of the options here. Let me go through all of the many, 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 many safeties this thing has. 
you have a firing pin block up here. I have never seen this on a firearm, at least not to my knowledge. See that right up there. Now that's firing pin is engaged and you drop that hammer, it's going to go off. If you drop that, like so, and it's quite tight to do so, it might loosen up over time. You drop that hammer, gun's not going to go off. Pull the trigger, no problem. Now, the company recommends you carry it that way before dropping the safety and firing it. That's not going to work real well. It's not real positive or easy to grab a hold of because to disengage it, you have to push it up. And then to get the safety off, you have to push the safety down right there. Um, it's just not going to flow real well. It, it's just too hard to use. I did not use that one time at the range today. It didn't seem to get in the way or cause a problem. But if you want to carry it that way, you want to be picky, well, so be it. So that's safe, and that's fire, obviously. Next safety on this thing, right here, your standard style safety. Down is fire, up is safe. You can see that right there. Now, this thing has no slide stop necessarily as far as last round open, but what you'll find is when you fire this thing, a lot of times, if you're manually working this thing and not working hard enough, it's going to stick open a little bit on its own. Now, I've not had that happen on actual last round fired, but it almost looks like there's a slide stop. There's not. Okay. That's just because you didn't rack it hard enough. Okay. So, you can use the safety as a slide stop. You push it back. There you go. So, that is a slide stop. You do have that option. Nothing wrong with this. This is a much better safety than on the Jimenez Arms. It's tight enough, but not too tight. I found that 22 Jimenez Arms, J22, to be just ridiculously light and almost dangerous for concealed carry with one in the pipe. This, I wouldn't worry about it so much, especially with all the millions of safeties on this thing. Now, this is a single action only pistol, which makes it a lot more fun to shoot, but probably a little more frightening for some people to carry. A lot of people do not like carrying Condition 1. If I was going to carry this pistol, if I had to, I would carry it Condition 1 with the safety on because what you run into is with a hammer down, if you've got a new shooter that does not have a lot of upper grip strength, you know, hand strength, female, this might be a little tight. I'm not doing this with my full strength, obviously, but it's quite tight to get that thing all the way back. A lot of female shooters are going to have to cock that hammer and then chamber around, which is not necessarily bad practice, um, kind of between a revolver and a semi-auto, just a little different. Now, the biggest complaint I have about this thing is the magazine disconnect safety. I've never been a fan of those. I've never liked them at all. This one has one, probably because it's made in California. It's made in Ontario, California, so I guess maybe to make these things out there, you've got to put way more on than they need to be, especially being a, quote, Saturday Night Special, low-cost gun. So, what you're going to find right here is that if it's on fire like it is right now, you cannot release the magazine. It will not come out. When I got this thing home, I thought, oh my god, I got a lemon. It was already broken. Cannot get the magazine to disconnect. Well, then I looked around and realized my mistake. You turn around, put this thing on safe, pops right out. No problem whatsoever. One benefit or negative to this gun, depending on who you are, is that if the magazine is out, this gun is completely and utterly inoperable. You cannot work the slide. Uh, you cannot move the safety at all. It is locked in the safe position at this point. So even if there's a round in here, there's no way to get the thing to go off, okay? Whether the uh, firing pin safety is on or off, this thing's locked down tight. Now, look at a gun safety. I guess that's a good thing, but I just don't like that. What if my magazine falls out and I've still got one round in the pipe just because I accidentally hit it and I pull the trigger? Oh, gun no fire. So I don't like that at all. Um, another problem with it, I say you can't rack the slide at all. People complain that you cannot check this thing to be safe with around in the, with the magazine out. Well, yes, you can two ways. First of all, you can pull it back and inspect right there. You can see if there's a round in there. But even if you couldn't, I heard somebody complain that at their range when they called, you know, cease fire, you have to rack the slide back and put your weapon down, and that they had to sit here and continually rack the slide to empty the rounds before they could drop the mag. Um, I'm going to post on their video here later. Uh, they didn't think through this too much. They really didn't. They're thinking through this like your standard pistol where you drop the magazine and then rack the slide. And that's the normal way. I agree. You're right. But what you can do with this pistol to clear it safely, quickly, and ensure that it's unloaded, and I don't know why nobody thought of this, is you rack the slide and engage the slide stop. Oh, now the gun's open. It's not going to close on you whether it's a loaded magazine or not. It's now in the safe position, and you can drop the mag. Ooh, yeah, real hard there, guys. Not tough thinking at all. 
again, sitting there racking the slide like an idiot just to unload the darn thing. Um, stop and think for a minute about the way this thing works with its oddities. Rack it, lock it into place, and then you're good to go. I drop the mag, it's obviously safe and inoperable at this point. As we said, with the magazine out, you still can't rack the slide or anything else. And this is another reason I would suggest having a second magazine if one was loaded and I had a another one that I wanted to, if I want to drop this thing empty, it's easier to have two mags. This should come with two mags. But anyway, this is fine. This is a safe way to unload this pistol. It's going to work and you can do it quickly. Just got to stop and think about it for a second. It doesn't flow quite as normally as your other pistols. Now, some people have gone in and voided their warranties by taking the side plates off and changing the internal dynamics so that you can still work the slide with the uh, magazine out. That voids the warranty. I don't know if I'm going to do that. I may because it might make it, well, it will make it similar or more similar to my standard semi-auto pistols that I'm training people on. But for now, I'm going to keep it the same way it is. Uh, probably not going to void the warranty on it just because I don't want to. But I may. I may just buy another one. I don't know. I'll probably pick up one of those range kits when I can find one. Um, sights obviously seem to be pretty good. I don't know if you really need adjustability on these things. That's probably just one more part to break in my opinion. But like I said, overall the sights are fairly good. I've not broken this down yet, but apparently it's fairly easy with your little takedown lever up here to get the barrel pulled off and reattach that 5-inch barrel. I really want to try one of those 5-inch barrels out just to see what this thing can do. And no slide bite or anything because you got your little beaver tail back here. Um, there's no beaver tail safety, anything like that. Again, this thing has enough safeties on it, too many as it is. The trigger is quite wide. Uh, it's grooved and ridged. That was one thing I did not mention in the positive. That's fairly good. Um, the weight on this, I would guess, is roughly six and a half, maybe seven pounds. I did not test that, but just from knowledge, I'd say that's about what it is. Not the best Christmas trigger in the world, but not a lot of creep, not a lot of grit. Uh, fairly decent, honestly, for this. Uh, much better, less spongy than the high point. Um, more comfortable than the Jimenez plastic triggers. So for a trigger, for a gun this price, this is probably my favorite out of little low-cost guns that I've tried. So like I said, overall, I would buy this only as a range toy uh, to train shooters, to have fun with, shoot cans, whatever. It's going to do a very, very good job of that. If you absolutely had to have a backup gun or something like that somewhere, you know, to throw around, I guess you could use it as that, but to use this the way they say to with all the the safety's involved, especially if you didn't want the hammer cocked to carry this thing safely. It's going to be ridiculous. You got the hammer down, the safety on, and the firing pin safety engaged. To get this thing to fire, you would have to drop, ra I'm sorry, raise this safety, drop this one, rack the slide, or just cock the hammer if you happen to have one in the chamber already, which I would not recommend dropping this on a live round. Um, Anyway, just seems like way too many things to remember in a combat situation or self-defense, especially to get the mag out. Now, you're probably not going to need to replace a 10-round magazine in a firefight, but if you did and you're firing, this thing fires the last round, you go to hit the magazine release, it's not going to drop. You have to engage the safety, drop the mag, insert another mag, take the safety off, and then rack the slide. Way too many steps. Way, way too many steps for a defensive situation. Again, if it's the only gun I had in a defensive situation, sure, it's a heck of a lot better than nothing. But I don't know if I'd pick a $140 gun necessarily for defense. I'd probably go for a high pointer him and as nine. Or one of the little three eighties that are out there. I'd pick just about anything over a twenty two. Twenty two is not terrible, obviously because you can get a lot of shots on your target. I love a twenty two. I don't want to get shot ten times in the chest with a twenty two. That would ruin my day and probably my life. But this little gun is just not made for that. Again, you can go change the internal dynamics of this thing if you want to. I would not recommend that. I was always trained shoot and carry a gun the way it was designed to be shot and carried. So shooting and carrying this the way it needs to be, or the way it's designed to be, it's going to be a little much. But for a fun little gun, gun range gun, plinking around, especially for training females and children, I think this is an excellent little choice. You cannot beat the price. 130 bucks or so, 140 Especially that little range kit, if I can ever find one of those. That just looks awesome. Um, for the money. I think they're like 200 bucks or something total. I'll probably do more videos on this, especially if I get the, um, quote, extended mag and the longer barrel. We'll see how that shows. Uh, turns out. So, again, there's the target. A uh, little high. That's probably me, I guess. I don't know. I'll say six yards or so away. we will need to pace that out and measure it out at some point. But perfectly decent accuracy for a fun day at the range. 
Hope you enjoyed it. Andy Prepper out.